Hello and welcome to Dateline Lagos on Channels Television. I'm Ayo Tunde Balogun. Coming up on the program, Governor Sonwolu holds 2022 WAPA Connect, Lagos UNICEF launches Nigeria Learning Passport, and DSVA 2022 Award Night comes to life. The Lagos State Government says it has empowered over 65,000 women through the Women Affairs and Poverty Alleviation Scheme. The State Governor, Babajide Sonwolu, made this comment at the 2022 Women Affairs and Poverty Alleviation Program held at the Lagos Continental Hotel, Victoria Island, Lagos. Take a look. It's the 2022 Women Affairs Poverty Alleviation Program in Lagos State. Lagos State Executive Council members and other dignitaries converge on the Lagos Continental Hotel, Victoria Island, to celebrate those they describe as emerging total women. Governor Babajide Sonwolu arrives at the venue to support women in the state. I cannot hear your applause. The commissioner in charge of women affairs set the tone for the event by explaining that women empowerment remains pertinent for the achievement of United Nations 2030 Agenda on Sustainable Development Goals. Women play a pivotal role to achieve epochal significant financial statuses that would certainly boost the economy, along with the diverse roles in shaping the society across social, economic, and political level. It has been said that the empowerment of women is central to all initiatives in order to achieve sustainable economic, social, and environmental development. The World Bank observed that over two decades ago, the people, poverty in the developing country is on the rise, and this has not significantly abated up to date, especially in Nigeria. In fact, millions of people, especially women across the country, endure lives of abject poverty. Even though the Abuja Declaration on Participatory Development holds that sustainable development can only be achieved with the full participation of women who constitute approximately 50% of the population. The imagined total woman is, a is full of wisdom, worth, warmth. She's a builder and elevator of others. The imagined total woman is essential to the nation's economic growth, health, and social development of families, peace, and security of a community and country. When women are living safe, fulfilled, and productive lives, they can reach their full potential, contributing their skills to the workforce and can raise happier and healthier families. Bringing it down to the state level, it is an established fact that the economic activities of women oftentimes constitute the backbone of our economy. Studies have shown that improving women's economic opportunities is the key to poverty reduction and development. The guest speaker, Mrs. Hassanatu Adegwite, is the executive director of the Women in Management, Business and Public Service, and she encourages women to remain steadfast in whatever they engage in to achieve their dreams. Every single one of us has a story, and every single one of us has a journey. But the important thing is not how you started. It is not even how the journey itself. It is the transformation of what you become, and the impact you make, and the stories that will be told about you long after you have gone. What am I saying when it comes to transformation? When you are rejected. When you get to a stage that where you thought would be the comfort zone is the place that you are thrown away. Don't stay there and be moping. Just move on. Go to where the celebration is the loudest and establish your mark and your purpose. That is what, and that's what I was telling you, the butterfly seeks places where they can thrive. I use this analogy to also say that it is the same thing that is happening in our nation and in every organization, whether it's the private or the public sector. 
you, the women here, you are the butterflies that Nigeria is waiting for. When you have an opportunity, it has a time limit. Don't waste it. Make a significant impact. Let your story be told. Let generations hit their chest and say, because of you, I am where I am today. Governor Babajide Sanwolu assures the people of improving the welfare of women and raising their capacity to become self-sufficient. For us as a government, deliberately we don't complete any picture if there's no woman there. And I tell everyone that this is not a fair representation. We have to ensure that we deliberately, deliberately create a seat for our women in all spheres of life. In all spheres of life. And I want to assure you that for, for me personally, I will continue you know, to ensure that it's not just we want gender balance. It's because it's the right thing to do and it's been demonstrated continuously that when you indeed put a woman in position of authority, not only do you get results, you get outstanding outcomes, you know, from those interventions. <laughs> and so it's not gain saying that you've all achieved different levels of success against all odds in your various endeavors. However, the real issues that must be of serious concern to us is how do we support, how do we ensure that we inspire, how do we encourage young emerging women to arrive at their destination against all odds. And so as a government that is committed to improving the welfare of women and raising their capacity to become self-sufficient, self-reliant, and self-motivated, we have in the past three and a half years developed and implemented initiatives, policies, and programs that have directly benefited our women in our states. I think the commissioner also said it, you know, of all our 32 um, um, centers that we have, you know, vocational and training centers, we know clearly that about 80 to 85% of people that graduate out of them are women. And we don't owe any apology. That's what we want. That's how we want to encourage them. That's how we want to empower them. Because we also know that once you empower you know, a woman, it's a whole family that they're actually empowering. It's a whole series of, you know, um, of, 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 of future generators, you know, future leaders that they're inspired. Because through them and with them, we know that the future will be bright for our kids. And so we see these initiatives that cuts across skills acquisition in relevant vocations, financial support, especially through Lagos State Employment Trust Fund, and the Ministry of um, uh, Poverty Elevation, uh, WAPA and Poverty Elevation, the second Ministry of Wealth Creation. You know, where, where is Arubiake? Where Ms. Arubiake is also very, very passionate. In all of the grants that we give out, you know, 60 to 65% of them, we deliberately ensure that, you know, are women. They're not just vulnerable. They're people that we need to specially take care of. And that's what we're doing. And the word of assurance for those waiting to benefit from the state empowerment program. What we try to do is to use the social register of Lagos State Government, which is also approved by the World Bank, to select the vulnerable and indigent Lagosians who qualify to benefit from our empowerment programs. And then we go to communities, some are on the islands, on, you know, like Ilashe, Irede and communities like that across the sea, where they feel neglected, we try to go to such communities to look for women who need government intervention. And then we have trained several categories of women, ranging from people living with disability, people living with sickle cell anemia, HIV patients, retired civil servants, women organizations, faith-based organizations, we've dealt with several categories of people. Lagos State has zero tolerance for idleness. There are great opportunities out there. I want to urge women in Lagos State to afford themselves those opportunities. We have 19 skills acquisition centers where women, youth, men, anybody living in Lagos State can walk into and learn a, st a skill the duration ranges from six months to 12 months. And we have a four weeks short-term skills training. And all of these trainings are free of charge. 
So far, over 65,000 women have been empowered since the administration of Governor Sonwolu, and the state government promises to do more for the people of the state. From women empowerment to the education sector, well, the Lagos State Government has launched a digital learning platform called Nigeria Learning Passport to improve teaching and learning with the use of technology. This was achieved through a partnership between the state government and the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF. Speaking at the event at Alausa in Ikeja, the State Commissioner for Education, Bala Shade Adifisayo, says the initiative will enhance socio-economic growth and bridge the knowledge gap through the use of technology. The administration of Governor Babajide Sawalu has continued to foster essential partnerships to upscale the implementation of the third pillar of the theme's agenda, education and technology, to ultimately prepare a world-class multi-skilled workforce for global recognition. This time, the collaboration between State Ministry of Education and the United Nations Children's Fund has resulted in the formal launch of Nigeria Learning Passport, a digital platform for students to learn, is showcased at Alao Sai Keja. The state government has invested so much into the education sector by upgrading school infrastructure and the establishment of a technology-driven school. The Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Education, explains more about the partnership with UNICEF. During the pandemic, we had different platforms to reach out to our students, our students while at home. We used the common one, WhatsApp. We went on TV, on radio, just that our students must learn. We also have other programs that still run on radio to ensure that students who, for one reason or the other, could not go to school. Sometimes it could be just be ill health. But for that child not to miss any learning, that child still has to learn. And that buttresses the fact that learning is not confined to work forwards of classroom alone. So you deserve a sort of out to these our students who for one reason or the other are out of school. I want to implore our teachers, our students and of course our parents to actually take advantage of this additional tool so that learning will be enriched, teaching will uh, equally be fulfilled and we all will be winners. The Chief of Field Office, UNICEF Nigeria, says UNICEF is determined to achieve the Sustainable Development Goal on Education by complementing the federating states to accelerate education reforms. The MLP, as we call it, is all about children, young people, teachers and parents innovatively increasing access to quality education. Allow me to congratulate the Lagos State Ministry of Education for keying into this creative and very timely digital learning solution. Young people must be equipped with the skills and the opportunities that will transform the Nigeria of tomorrow into a country with thriving and sustainable economic growth. The cost of inaction would be far too high. Whilst platforms such as Generation Unlimited Nigeria, also known as Genu Niger, which is a public-private youth partnership platform, are supporting children access quality education but also young people transition from learning to earning with also another digital platform called Yoma on which we are delivering skills and all tools needed to be prepared for the world of work. 
And the State Commissioner for Education, Folasha Dea Defisayo, emphasizes that the initiative will enhance socioeconomic growth and also serve as an intervention to bridge the knowledge gap using technology to enrich creativity. If we are able to ensure that our children are well educated, able to hold themselves globally, able to work anywhere, be effective and efficient, the real 21st century people, we have to invest in education. Education is not a cost. Education is an investment because it drives economic growth and opportunity. And uh, what is our job here? Is to drive the growth, is to contribute to the social cohesion and economic growth of the state. Is to bridge the gaps and reach everybody so that there is a chance for every child in this country to do well. That should be what should drive the Ministry of Education. And I think that is what we are trying to keep on doing in Lagos State. So we thank UNICEF because that means that uh, you understand, we understand where you are coming from. I hope you understand where we are coming from as well. So this is a very important day. What is the importance of technology? Why should we invest in technology? The use of technology promotes creativity and collaboration. Nowadays, you cannot work alone. Even in the world of workplace, you see us going on Zoom, holding meetings, having partners. Many of the things we've done in Lagos State were in collaboration with a myriad of partners. Many, many partners who supported us and helped us. And it was the power of the deployment of technology that enabled us to work with these partners during COVID, before COVID, and since COVID. Students appreciate the state government for the new initiative. The importance of this program to me as a student is that the teaching we have in school, they are not enough like that. So we can go online for more, for us to have a better understanding. I want to say a very big thank you to them for giving us this opportunity. A very big thank you on behalf of all the students in Lagos State to the governor for giving us this great opportunity to transform education beyond what we all assume it to be before. The Nigeria Learning Passport is another solution initiative geared towards closing the learning gap with a focus on equitable, quality and flexible learning. It enables access to education for children, youth and teachers through the use of portable digital devices. And finally on the program, Governor Babajide Sonwolu has commended the management of the Lagos State Domestic and Sexual Violence Agency under the leadership of the Executive Secretary, Mrs. Titilala Viva Adeni, for supporting his administration to achieve its lofty goal of building a greater Lagos in which sexual and gender-based violence will have no place. Now, the governor, who was represented by the First Lady of Lagos, Dr. Ibijo Kesonwolu, made this comment at the Domestic and Sexual Violence Agency Governor's Commendation and Award Ceremony at Oregon in Lagos. The Lagos State Domestic and Sexual Lagos Violence State Senior Agency Officials gorgeously dressed for the 2022 Please State Domestic and Sexual Violence Agency Governor's Commendation and Award Ceremony at, at Oregu, the Akedra area. The wife of the Lagos State Governor, Dr. Bijoke, makes her way in for the ceremony. The State Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice, Moyosore Onigbanjo, who oversees the DSVA, highlights steps taken by the government to combat domestic and sexual violence in Lagos. Statistics has revealed that individuals of every tribe, ethnic group, faith and background may experience domestic violence, but some communities are disproportionately affected. To show the extent to which this can happen to anyone in our society and the extent of prevalence, I dare say almost, if not everybody in this room this evening, most likely knows some, someone personally that has experienced domestic or sexual violence. In order to combat the prevalence of domestic and sexual violence, the state government is giving priority for adequate reporting and concerted effort is being made towards the prosecution of reported cases timelessly. 
This important development will also help survivors receive holistic support, including medical, legal, psychosocial support, and justice. Whilst data reveals that we are gradually breaking the culture of silence, we are, however, not oblivious of the fact that these issues continue to remain grossly underreported. I think we can all agree that the time for complacency is long gone, and now is the time for stronger action. This is of utmost importance, as this administration, ably led by Mr. Governor, has declared zero, zero tolerance for sexual and gender-based violence. Violence against women, children, and men has tremendous cost to communities, nations, and societies if left, if left unaddressed. These human rights violations pose serious consequences for current, for current and future generations, as well as our efforts to ensure peace and security in our dear state. The success story of the Domestic and Sexual Violence Agency would not have been achievable without the support of the State Police Command, who is willing to do more to end the menace. Since 2013, the Police Command deemed it expedient to establish a designated and dedicated unit within the police force, whose mandate is to investigate and prosecute incidents of domestic and sexual-based violence in Lagos State. This unit is referred to as the Family Support Unit. This was supported by the Justice for All program, implemented by the British Council, in our resolve to ensure sustainability of this innovation, the Office of the Commissioner of Police has over the years partnered with the Office of the Attorney General with a view to establishing other family support units in the state. As of today, there are 21 family support units spread across the metropolis, and these units are coordinated by the Gender Desk Department located in the police headquarters. It is worthy of note that this innovation has been replicated in other states across the country. While several gains have been made, a lot remains to be done. Let me therefore use this medium to reiterate the Lagos State Police Command's total resolve in ensuring diligent investigation and prosecution of domestic and sexual-based violence cases. We will therefore leave no stone unturned until we read our death state of this menace. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ibijoke Sanwolu is wearing two caps for this occasion. She speaks on behalf of Governor Sanwolu with an emphasis on zero tolerance to issues of gender-based violence. Since the inception of our administration, the fight against these forms of abuse have been on the front burner. And we have initiated programs and strategies which have been very effective, particularly in breaking the culture of silence under which this erroneous crime has, continuous, has continued to be perpetrated with impunity. The family is the foundation of the society, and a stable family unit can raise strong men and women who are capable leaders in the society. If we want to build the Lagos of our collective desires, then we must tackle any obstacle to the peace, tranquility, and positive growth of the family unit. This award and commendation ceremony is a culmination of the month-long arrive and sensitization exercise, which brings to the fore the need for an affirmative action on domestic, gender, and sexual violence, which is destroying the fabric of our society. I congratulate and commend all the departments and units that have teamed up to fight this good fight and pray that God will continue to strengthen them emotionally, spiritually, and physically. I congratulate all the awardees who have exemplified excellence and commitment to service. I charge you to work even harder and come up with more innovative ways to achieve our goal. Our policy of zero tolerance on issues of gender-based violence is non-negotiable and 
we are willing and ready to collaborate with organizations and well-meaning individuals to nip this menace in the bud. Over 48,000 cases of domestic and sexual violence were received in 10 months and the Executive Secretary, DSVA, says the award ceremony provides opportunity for the state government to recognize agencies that have supported the goal to end human rights violation in Lagos. This is just an opportunity to recognize um, responder agencies, the police, the social welfare, non-governmental organizations, mandated reporters, government agencies, private donors, you know, that support us. Because government cannot do this on its own. And so we're so grateful for the support that we get from all these individuals and organizations. Our mandate given to us by the governor, Governor Babajide Sowoli, to reduce this occurrence to the barest minimum. And you know, we're gradually breaking the culture of silence. And we hope that hopefully we may not even have an office, you know, because we would have broken the culture of silence. Perpetrators will be held accountable, and you know, we won't have these occurrences again in our great state. The event was rounded off with presentation of awards to most responsive family support unit, K2 Divisional Police Office, most responsive family social services, Agege Child Protection Network, Lagos Chapter, Responsive Health Facility, Ekbe Primary Health Center, Supportive Government Partner, Office of Education Quality Assurance, and Special Recognition Award to Lagos State Emergency Management Agency. Well, that's the program for the week. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Ayotunde Balogo. Until we come your way again next time, please stay safe. Bye for now.